I'm Cliff Roth, and I mostly do speed painting these days. Um, I also do fully rendered pictures as well, but mostly I've been doing speed paints during Hangouts on Google+. Plus. Oh no, I start from a pre-textured background. It's two concrete textures overlaid on top of each other with a little layer tweaking in between them. Um, and then on top of that is uh, various different color fields. That way I can color pick all my values and colors pretty much straight from the canvas itself. Okay. That way I can use that as my palette as well. Oh, okay. So you'll be picking color, pointing, yep. and, and, yep. Like, and you know this, uh, the, yeah, the color palette well, that where they are, and then yeah, you, yeah. you're just picking them. I see, I see. Right, so uh, the first thing you do is you actually shape my head and talk a bit about that, like uh, uh, that, that initial feel. All right, uh, initially what I do is I uh, pick which color is going to be the background color or pretty close to the background color, and then I'll start um, basically outlining the head. So I'll do all the negative space first so that I have a basis of where the head's approximately going to be, and then I can narrow it down from there. So that's pretty much the thing I start with first is the background shape. Mm -hmm. Right, um, and, and then you put my hair and you put yep. my t-shirt. Yeah, then I'll do the hair and the t-shirt because typically that's the darkest part. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll usually take like a rough flesh tone to flesh out where the rest of the head's going to be. Mm -hmm. And then I just start doing features from there. Oh, okay, and so, in, my, in my case you start with uh, I think the nose and uh, the mouth a little? Yeah, yeah, I think I uh, did a rough where your mouth would be, mm -hmm. then um, I usually will start roughing in where the shadows themselves are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a little like the highlight of the nose, and then you know the the part right above your lip, and then mm -hmm. start adding your lips. Right. You sh I o almost always save the eyes for last mm -hmm. because that's the the the, sh the soul to our um, personality. Right. Is that what you mean? Right. Say? And it's like if if I started with the eyes, my instinct mm -hmm. would be to use all that time to detail the eyes, and really oh. that's not a good idea. Right. Um, right. Plus, once the eyes are there, it feels more finished to me. Mm -hmm. So I'll usually neglect the whole rest of the face. Right. So you keep it. Uh, deliberately as an unfinished uh, uh, during the process, so you, you right. don't not narrow yourself in too much. My uh, my nose and my mouth, the most prominent feature to you. That's why you paint them first. Like talk talk a um, about that. Well, you uh, in your case, you have a very unique mouth, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know, and your nose is right above it, so that just makes sense to put that there. That way, I have. A, it's also a good place so I know where to put the features. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I did your mouth first. It's right. because it's, it's distinctive. Mm -hmm. And I was able to put that in that way, better gauge where everything else is going to go. So that, in a sense, if I may flip the question a little. So if someone's nose or their cheekbone and one are the most prominent feature, would you start with those first? Yeah, g generally speaking, once the basic framework is down, because mm. either way I'm going to most likely do the uh, same background and then the flesh in where the face is going to be. But as far as mm. the features go, usually I'll go with the most uh, distinctive, the most prominent. Like Because mm. in many cases, you could just do that one feature and somebody will know who it is. Mm -hmm. um, right, right. So, right, uh, so starting if, with those... If they know who the subject is in the first place, mm -hmm. um, so they can generally tell who it's going to be just by that one really distinct feature. So starting with those, you frame that person right. yeah. already. And then you kind of... Uh, uh, exactly. Also, you have the, the almost the full length of the time to uh -huh. flush that out and then... then excuse me, hang on the features uh, of the person to it. Yeah. Right. Yes, once you get the basic likeness down, mm -hmm. the rest is just flushing, filling in. Mm -hmm. Like, where in your case, I could put your eyes in first, but it's really not going to read as you without the rest of your face there. Mm -hmm. Where once your mouth and nose were there, then it's a little bit more read readable, even if I left the eyes out completely. Mm -hmm. So still better if they know your face to begin with, mm. we'll probably better be able to tell it's you. Right, right. So would you say, like, in a, in a 20 minutes process or 30 minutes process, uh, uh, after maybe 10 or uh, so minutes, you would have that person framed already and then you'd be oh, just yeah. fine-tuning the, oh, yeah. the shape usually of the... Usually within the first 5 to 10 minutes, it's, it's yeah, it's usually fairly quick. Mm -hmm. um, presuming they have a decent camera to begin with. Um mm -hmm. It does take a little bit longer with a uh, bad camera because then it's a little bit more of guesswork because mm -hmm. it's 
you know, obviously the less I can see what your face looks like. So bad camera meaning is not as high resolution detail or yeah, like very pixelated. Or it's just dark, like there's not good lighting. Oh, okay. Because right. then it's a little bit harder for me to guess or figure out what is the important features. Uh, I didn't really go to art school per se. I did, um, out of high school, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I had no idea. Mm. And I couldn't see going to school not knowing. I didn't want to just spend money just to go to school just because mm. it's the thing to do. Um, eventually, I did decide I wanted to go to um do something in the art field. Mm -hmm. So I took a couple of preliminary courses that I had to take that were just mandatory. They didn't teach me anything that I didn't already know through high mm -hmm. school courses, but they were prerequisites for mm -hmm. more advanced stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was applying to art. I was just about to start applying to art school when I found out about my first daughter. I'm like, well, there goes that. So you know, <laughs> I never. Uh, so I never actually ended up going to art school at all. Mm. Um, Most of so then for years, I was just you know teaching myself, picking up stuff here and there because I do have a lot of artist friends. Mm. Um, uh, so I'd read any books I can get, and then the advent of YouTube was wonderful because then I started watching as many YouTube videos as I could find. Oh really? Like uh, how other people do the painting or oh, yeah, describe yeah. the instruction? Oh yeah, yeah. Any YouTube uh, video with art on it, I could possibly find. Mm. Um. I would. So with and, art in it, like uh, the, the create the art creation process, or the, the yeah, process? most a lot of them. Um, there's a lot of videos out there that they refer to as speed paints, but they're really not because they're just sped up actual paintings. Oh, okay. And right. then usually they'll set it to music. But then there were some who were um, more instructional in nature, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Joe Bloom uh, has a lot of videos out there that are really very well done. They're on caricature itself, mm -hmm. and. Um, through him, I found a bunch of other artists, and then I found out about this site called Schoolism.com, which is an online art school. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. Um, they do both uh, a self-study course where you just get the videos. Mm -hmm. Then they do the other one where it's more interactive, where you uh, download the videos, you watch them, you do your homework assignment, you send it back in, and then mm -hmm. they, uh, whichever course you're taking, the instructor, the instructor would then um, overlay on, right on top of your stuff, mm. you know, point out where you can, you know, mm -hmm. get better and whatnot and send you a back a video. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I couldn't afford that version of the course at the time. I would have really liked to. But I took the uh, um, uh, digital caricature uh, course with Jason Seiler, but I took the self-study version, so I got to watch all the videos and get the information. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get, like, the feedback by sending my stuff in and having him overlay on top of it. But, you know... Even so, I still think it was well worth doing. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, so higher, that kind of high course is worth doing. If I could afford it, I mm -hmm. definitely would have done it. But that, that's so kind of got you started into thinking um, into this. Right. That that definitely helped me with the whole digital painting itself aspect mm -hmm. of it. Most definitely. Well, mm -hmm. it, it's interesting because I was in a hangout. Uh, mm -hmm. one, my first hangout actually mm -hmm. was with a group of artists, the ones who actually invited me. Um, Zach Elwood was uh, the one who invited me to Google Plus in the first place. Mm -hmm. And we were in a hangout, and it's uh, with me, him, and a few other members of the World Artist Network. And I was working on some other artwork on my screen. I wasn't broadcasting my face because at the time I wasn't really comfortable being on camera because, mm -hmm. you know, it was just unnatural to me. So I was used, I had previously done stuff where I was streaming my desktop. So I was just using that as, um, mm -hmm. I was almost using it as an extension of that because I used mm -hmm. to go to this site called chillstream.org. Which is basically um, it uses Tiny Chat and it's similar. You know, you're streaming your screen and then you're uh, there's a chat box, etc. Mm. Um, but that was with other artists, and I would do that. So I was using it similar to that, but I was just working on. I forgot what piece I was even working on. I think it was a Medusa piece. Mm -hmm. But then I saw some. You know, I saw the clear picture of uh, Zach in the screen. So just as a joke, I'm like, all right, might as well just quickly paint him. And I, I think that one took like five minutes. I was. Uh, mm -hmm. It was. Mostly just because he was there. It was like sort of like a surprise. I'm like, hey, he's there. Might as well paint him. Yeah, like I a fellow painting nothing. a fellow artist and right. give that a try. <laughs> right. And I really didn't think nothing of that. You know, there was no plan to, hey, let's start painting everybody. That It didn't come from that at all. Mm -hmm. um, it was just something I did. So he is the first one I, mm -hmm. that I painted via Hangout. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until a little bit later because I, uh, I have an album of celebrity speed paints because I, mm -hmm. I do or did speed painting as a way of warming up for when I was going to be working on more high uh, fully rendered stuff. Mm -hmm. So somebody had left a comment on one of those speed paintings saying uh, 
essentially that they wish they were a celebrity so they could be painted too. Mm. Well, I figured to myself, well, why can't you be painted? I have no problem doing this. Mm. I'm just warming up. It makes no yeah. difference. Right, so, right, yeah. Um, so I did one of her, mm. and it was based off photographs because she herself could not join the hangout. Mm. Uh, but she posted a link to the hangout on oh. her page, and then, you know, all of a sudden there was like 10 people in the room. Mm. Well, nine, myself included. So um, it was weird because I didn't know any of these people. Oh. And it was, just, it was kind of disconcerting to have a bunch of people I had no clue who they were just show up to watch me paint something. Right. And it was it's like a and, strangers, uh, overwhelmed right. by eight strangers to you. And I hadn't narrowed down exactly what I was doing. I was mm. a little. Because hers is actually a full body one, started from a blank canvas. There was no, I didn't have a textured background. I wasn't doing that yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I hadn't narrowed down my process at all. Right, right. Oh, and and you, even her, you didn't know her too well, right? I mean, right. it's like she saw and, that, she yeah, kind exactly. of got that and asked so you, you just, said, why not? So right. it's nine strangers plus you. <laughs> right, right, right. So it's exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so I did go through, uh, I did get hers done. Um, but it wasn't like this at all. Hers is like a full-bodied one, and it's oh, okay. it's different. And it took like, I want to say it took about an hour, hour and a half. It wasn't long. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until after that. Uh, the first the first half-hour speed painting I did, I want to say, was of Sean Cohen. Um, his, I think, was the first one. But his also was get, uh, using a picture. And it was mm -hmm. still using a, it, that one was using a neutral colored background. And I used mm -hmm. his picture. And we were hanging out as it was doing going on mm -hmm. and I'm not sure exactly what made me decide to start using the textured background instead I think it was just to speed up the process because mm -hmm. um, normally if I'm using a uh, I would use a mid-tone background so that mm -hmm. uh, the darks and the lights would show up mm -hmm. when doing a speed painting but before that it was like uh, 45 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. uh, Right. So, but when I, as I wanted to realize, I wanted to do these faster because mm -hmm. the, my whole purpose in doing them at first was to get faster and more decisive mm -hmm. to get you know to pick out what I need to get done to get it done faster, a mm -hmm. lot faster, and it's helped tremendously. So uh, once I start, that's when I sort of decided to do with the textures. Um, that way, I'd have the value there, and it looks slightly more finished than it would if it was on a blank background. Because I find it more interesting. I mean, I still do some from photo if there's if they can't, you know, they don't have a video feed, whatnot. Mm. But to me, it's more interesting to do it. It's more challenging for one thing because people are moving around. It's not like they're going to stay perfectly still. Some do, but very rarely. Um, so it's a little bit more challenging and to me more interesting because doing from a photo, it's to me that's more work. Mm. Than, you know, it's not as entertaining because I could do that whether you're there or not, mm. and so it kind of defeats the to me, sort of defeats the purpose because for me, the purpose isn't the finished product. For the most part, it's the interaction mm -hmm. um, to see it develop. And working from the camera, for me, just works a little bit better because if I'm working from photo, um, especially if I have it downloaded on, on my system, mm -hmm. I'm going to want to zoom in and do a full detail, mm -hmm. detail rendering. I mean, whereas doing it from the camera, I can't. There's mm -hmm. no, I can't zoom in. I can't uh, reverse the image. There's mm -hmm. none of those little things that I normally would do when working on a full rendered picture. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't do a fully rendered picture. So it, it kind of limits me, which is good because by I could work within that more narrow band and mm -hmm. perfect that, which is what I've been doing. And I've right. been so, so you're not tricking yourself into focusing on the detail because you can zoom right. in. Exactly. You're lo looking at the totality. And if I may, right. uh, do you see that uh, when you paint a person where you have interaction, you can kind of see them animated and then maybe pick out right. different features exactly. that you, you, want to f you want to focus on? Right, right. That, that's exactly right. Because as they're moving around, you can see more of what's as the light changes. You can mm -hmm. beat the volumes on the face a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're doing from a picture, yeah, you might be able to capture that picture, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily them because, mm -hmm. you know, some people look completely different picture to picture to picture. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, so while a good chunk of the ones I have done are from pictures or in, in a few cases, they're from um, still frames, like mm -hmm. taken from, they were live at one point, but they're screen captures. Like when I did the one of uh, Guy Kawasaki, he was in the chat. He was in the hangout for a little bit, but he mm. had to go because he's a very busy man. Mm. So uh, we got a screen capture of him, and I finished that one off based on screen so, capture. Thanks a lot, uh, Cliff, for oh, doing yeah. this interview with me. Oh, no problem.